Hello and welcome to User Management Embedded User Authentication. My name is Mary Kelly and I'm a software consultant here at Embarcadero. Today we're going to go over what is embedded user authentication, how to set EUA up, encrypting a database, and then going further and encrypting specific columns of our database. Now, what is embedded user authentication? Embedded user authentication allows you to store the database username and password info directly in your database. When user authentication is embedded in a database, the database metadata IP is better protected from outside forces. EUA also makes transportable databases more secure. So if you're using or deploying to mobile devices using the to-go license, you're then able to make sure that unless you have the username and password for the database, you can't access it. Now let's jump into the IDE to see how to set up embedded user authentication. All right, so if I right click on the database, I can go to Properties and General, where all the way at the bottom in my options, I've got Embedded User Authentication. Currently it's set to Disabled, but if I go through and enable it, it brings up a new listing of three additional options that I can choose from. So EUA Active, I'm going to set Encrypted to Yes, and I'm going to leave Strong Password Encryption at just No. Now it opens up the encryption wizard for the database that I'm looking at and I just have to type in my sysdso password. Now the sysdso is the system data security officer and you create that separately. I can click next, choose an encryption password uh, and I will choose these passwords. Next is the encryption name, so I'm just going to say case test, and I'm going to use case sensitive name with the grant option. And then it gives me some options, so I'm going to choose AES for my cipher and 256 for my qubit length. I'm going to go ahead and also change my init vector and padding to be random giving me a cipher block chaining and padding. Then click next, a backup key, test case test with a case sensitive name and a password of some sort. And then I can click OK and my database is now encrypted. With column level encryption, only the data of the selected columns is encrypted. With this level of encryption, the database and table owners are the only ones who can specify granting or revoking access to certain users, roles, stored procedures, and triggers. Now I can either double click or even right click on one of the tables and click on properties and it'll open up the columns within the job table and then I can click here on the little alter selected item button and then I can go ahead and choose which field I actually or which column I actually want to encrypt so in this case I'll choose min salary and I can choose edit field now when you initially set up this table you wouldn't have actually seen the encryption and decrypt default as those two were added after you added encryption to the database. And here I can then choose test case and the decrypt default. So this is the value that actually gets displayed to users who aren't granted permission to see or alter the data in this specific column. So if no decrypt default is actually specified, then IB console actually hides the column when a user that doesn't have rights tries to display the data in this particular table. So I'll click OK. 
and OK again. And now we have our min underscore salary encrypted with the case test encryption. So now we have enabled embedded user authentication, encrypted our entire database, and also encrypted specific columns within a table. Thanks for checking out this video on user management.